we're going to be talking to uh, Mike Dillis in just a moment from the uh, Vancouver Canucks. Um, did you not think, okay, because that's the first thing I'm going to ask Mike here. Um, when <laughs> the shot goes off the foot of Kevin Bx, okay, in the first period, and he scoots off the ice and lifts down the hallway, did you not say to yourself, this can't be happening. Another one bites the dust, and I had the same problem the game before uh, with in St. Louis with Sammy Salo when he hurt his left leg, but uh, apparently he was okay. It's just one of those pins and needles things right now. We've got Mike Gillis, uh, the general manager of the Canucks on the line right now. Mike, thanks for doing this. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Dave, and you? Very good, very good. Did you do the same thing we did, sort of kind of hold your breath and go, oh, God, no, this can't be happening? Um, No. No? <laughs> No, I was thinking if it's happening, what are we going to do? Okay, all right. How, how are you dealing with this? Because this is just one of those things that happens. You keep saying to yourself, man, you know, if you don't have any bad luck, you don't have any luck at all. Well, you know, it's um, it's just the way it goes. I mean, it's, there's injuries all over the league, and uh, we're just hopeful we're getting them out of the way right we had till at the start of the year. And, um played through it fairly well, not great, but fairly well, and uh, we're having some now, and hopefully, uh, you know, we're pretty confident we're going to have everybody back and ready to play for the playoffs, so, you know, it might, might get some rest, and and uh, we might be better off for it, we might not, we're not sure yet. Mike, can you give us an update uh, on uh, Dan Hamhuis and Keith Ballard? Um, yeah, Dan is, um, Dan has resumed skating and seems to be progressing, uh, well, but, you know, I'm always cautious when you're talking about concussions and head injuries because they, they can, uh, you know, they can, you have to be conservative and they can reverse themselves. Um, and with Keith, he's, um, looks like he's ahead of schedule and he's um, probably going to skate practice with the team uh, next week. And once that happens, if he gets cleared to practice um, with full contact, it shouldn't be much longer after that. Hard to believe that, given the pictures we've seen of that injury, it was gruesome. But uh, Jan Sobe and Chris Tana, uh, your thoughts on how they performed uh, uh, during this injury problem? Well, Jan's only played one game, and um, you know I think he was pretty nervous in that game. But he, you know, he did well. He's a big guy who skates really well, and he probably would have played games for us if he hadn't been in that car accident. Uh, you know, before, just before training camp. Um, but we're thrilled that Jan has made as much progress as he has. And for him to be playing on our team now, uh, you know, we were unsure that that was going to happen uh, this season based on what happened to him just prior to training camp. So that's great news. And um, but Chris Tannis has been really solid. He, uh, he, uh, you know, he gets his call with the puck, and he uh, goes back and retrieves it and makes a good play and stays out of traffic and has a good stick. So he's um, he's been a, a great surprise for us. Yeah, well, tell us about that, Mike, how Chris Tanev w was discovered and just how surprised you may be at him making uh, this progress. Two years ago, he's playing Tier 2 Junior. Yeah, well, it's, it's quite a story. Um, you know, he was very small up until uh, grade 12, and... Um, you know, he, Dave Gagne knew he and his family quite well, and he uh, he basically practiced for uh, almost an entire season and most of another season because he was um, he was too small to uh, to play in games without you know, being at risk physically. So, um, you know, he, he learned how to play. He was always a very smart player, and then he grew, and um, the draft had passed him by because he was so small, and then... Uh, he got a scholarship to RIT and played very well there, and he was a guy that was on our radar screen, and uh, it became apparent that he had some interest in coming to our team because of his relationship with Dave and felt that we were, you know, were committed to developing players and that he'd have a chance here, and you know, it's funny how things go. He went to Manitoba, he played, well, he started in the, in the uh, rookie tournament, and he was very good at that tournament, and then... Um, went to Manitoba and has been one of their top defensemen there. So he's, uh, it's quite a story.
Yeah, you mentioned the Hakani is with with the puck. Usually with the young defenseman, that that that's the last thing you see them develop. Uh, how ahead of a curve is he? Well, uh, for us, he's you know he's um, going on our team, so he uh, you know he he's got his head up all the time, and when when options close down, he puts it off the glass and out. And uh, you know, there's a lot of defensemen that play a long time before they learn that craft, and so. Um, well, he's been really good, and, and we're hoping that he just continues to get better. We're talking with Mike Ellis, General Manager of the Vancouver Canucks. So, Mike, trading deadline February 28th. Um, how active will you be? Uh, not sure yet, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> you mean you're, you're not going to break down every trade you're going to make between now and the 28th on this show? I'm shocked by this. Well, we might not make any. You know, so um, I think we... Um, you know, we've got to get a handle on when our defensemen are going to come back because we have to have cap space to get them back in our lineup. And, you know, you can, you can go off and start making trades and then realize that you're not going to get a guy back who, uh, after the trade deadline, because you don't have the space. So, you know, we may be very limited in what we do, um, depending on how these injuries are going to uh, turn out. How busy is it out there right now? Well, there's, you know, there's... Um, it's hard to say. I mean, we, we've gotten calls all year about players on our team, and we've been very happy with how our team's constituted and the balance that we have. And, um, you know, I'm not eager to make trades, and I, I think we did a lot of, uh, well, we did almost all the work in the summer. We we were very active in the summer in getting players and, um, and doing things, and you know, I feel more confident when you have more control like that in the summertime than being, uh, you know, at the mercy of other people and and uh, in a situation where you just don't have control. And that's what the trade deadline does. It, uh, you know, it, it causes a big scramble, and at the end of the day, you may regret what you do. Last night, another uh, another cheap shot, another player taking liberties with one of your star players. Um, I'm going to ask you the question that's been kicked around for a couple of days or so around here. Do you believe that your team is tough enough? Yeah, I do. I, I, I you know, I, are you talking about the clutter box thing? Yeah. Oh, well, you know, I'm not sure if Henrik was uh, trying to get a call there or what was going on. He didn't miss any time. So, I'm, you know, I mean, some of the guys that I've heard this thing about liberties and you know, some of the guys that were like Keith Bauer getting tangled up with the guy in Ottawa. I mean, that guy in Ottawa is not putting the fear of God in anybody I know. So, you know, I'm, I'm not quite sure where this is coming from or, or what's going on, but the you know, your top players have to play. It's, it's always tough, and it's tougher on them. They get more attention than anybody else, and they've got to fight through it and persevere. Um, you know, they, they've got to be your toughest guys, and, and our team has proven this year We've beaten every other good team in the league, both home and away. Um, our guys have, have stepped up to the challenges that they faced and they succeeded. So, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't buy that people taking liberties with our players. Um, yeah, you know, to me, I, I, I just don't see that as being uh, that effective a tool any longer in today's NHL. And, and Mike, another victory for an impressive-looking Corey Schneider last night in Minnesota. How important has he been not only to your team but to Cooper Burke Longo? Uh, he's, he's a very, I mean, his personality, I don't know if you remember him, Don, but he's, he's a, you know, he's, he's just a happy guy. Like he's, he's professional and committed and he's, you know, happy with where he's at and how things are going. And, um, and our guys really like him. And Roberto really likes him. They have a great relationship. And, um, you know, I think that. What we wanted to do was get him in 20 games, and I know at the start of the year, all kinds of people said, oh, that'll never happen, and that, this won't happen, and he's going to play at least 20 games. Um, we were very confident in his ability and his willingness to work, and um, to get Roberto that rest and, and have him fresh going into the playoffs, which we hope he'll be, it has been great. Mike, another uh, good win last night, uh, 4-1, to especially with the injuries. Uh, what a hell of a season this team is having so far. And again, congratulations on all of that. We appreciate your time, and we'll talk to you in a week or so. Okay. Thanks, Thanks Mike. Take care, Mike. That's uh, Mike Dillis, the uh, general manager of the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, we're back in a moment. Uh, the boards are open at 2-0 team, 208-326. On the cell 13, you've got it on the team, 1040.